idea for this book, Untold, really came about uh, as I was going through old papers and old photographs, and it occurred to me that I, what a great idea it would be to show some of the backstory, some of the process, some of the stories surrounding the making of these pictures, because it seemed to me that was a, an entirely different approach, different story. This shows, in some cases, uh, how difficult it was to get access and do these stories. I mean, the monsoon was an incredibly arduous task in that I spent so much of my time uh, up to my chest in dirty water, and I don't think uh, people may realize the amount of uh, strange situations we find ourselves in as photographers. One of the great things about recollecting stories and going back into my past work and these 15 different stories was uh, as I would dig through papers and old photographs, uh, so many old memories uh, kind of flooded into my head and I suddenly started to remember things that I hadn't even thought of for sometimes 10, 15, 20 years. So it was a really a wonderful way to kind of relive and to look back at all these amazing places and stories that I've been involved with for the past 30 years. I'm often asked uh, why the picture of Sharbat Gula, the Afghan girl, has become so famous. Uh, I'm not sure I'm the best person to answer that question, but if I, if I had to, I think part of the reason is that it's an interesting mix in her face of different emotions. Uh, she expresses so much in her eyes. Uh, on the one hand, she's this incredibly beautiful little girl, yet there's something that seems to be troubling her, and we don't know quite what it is. Her, her face is a bit dirty, her clothes are torn. Uh, she's not smiling, but she's not frowning. She has this sort of ambiguous, mysterious expression, but her eyes are so expressive, and it almost seems as like this little girl has perhaps seen more in her life than maybe she should have, uh, having been faced with the, with the war, uh, being a refugee, but most importantly, being an orphan. Her parents have been killed uh, at a very early age. It's been said that maybe this one photograph has sort of overshadowed my other work and that you know people know that picture but they don't know you know maybe who took it or the other photographs I've taken in my career but I, I really look at the more the glass half full than half empty I, I'm very proud to be associated with that picture I think the picture was sort of a gift and the fact that so many people know it recognize it uh, uh, you know get sometimes inspiration from it I, I find it uh, gratifying and it's, it's, it's an honor to be associated with that picture. Yeah, looking forward to future projects, assignments, uh, what I do is I imagine a story or a place that uh, I, I think is important uh, to go to and to tell that story, to explore it, to, uh, uh, and, and I, I, I places that I'm really excited to go to in the future, places like Madagascar and Iran and uh, Central Asia. Uh, so, uh, you know, th this, I basically just choose places and stories that fascinate me, uh, stories that I personally want to tell with my camera. In photography, we're never quite well, let me say, in, in photography, I, I think we're never quite subjective. I always think we have our own point of view. I think what's most important, though, is to make an honest, uh, you know, report, one that, that is, is sort of, uh, you do the best you can to tell the accurate story, uh, accuracy, ethics. I mean, you want to tell the story in the most honest way. You may have uh, your own opinion, but you have to tell it in the most uh, sort of honest and, and the most fair way you can. But I think we all, we always have our own ideas, our own opinions 
but we still have to do a, a kind of a balanced and fair presentation.